Hello, I'm Wendy Gelbert and welcome to Doors and Windows in Watercolours. I love this subject and find it absolutely fascinating and hope you will too. We're going to be painting this French window with shutters and as you can see I've just transferred this drawing from my tracing paper onto my watercolour paper. So let's just get started. The first thing we need to do is to apply the masking fluid. And I always clean this off first and then we put this where the light is going to hit our subject. Apply a little bit there and around the windows. This is really great help as this will dry and then we rub this out when it's dried and this will expose our fabulous little details. And this is a little duster hanging up on a washing line right across here and on some of the leaves. So here we are. I think that's complete. The next step, we're going to apply some texture paste. Now this is bought in pots or tubes and this will give you another dimension to your work. And what you do, you apply it with a palette knife. You have to sculpture the stonework. It's marvellous for stonework. And then let it dry. So we've just, it might confuse you when you go in and buy some of this because it says acrylics, but acrylics will go in under watercolours and work perfectly well with watercolour washes. There we are. And now I'm going to leave that to dry. Now this is completely dry, we will start with our first washes. We're going to start with some washy yellow ochre and just splash this over the wall area. So this is almost like a wet into wet all over here. Push this all over here, so very wet, still yellow ochre. all around the window so suddenly the shape begins to make sense. And you can see the texture paste just coming through now and around the greenery. Quickly showing up through the negative shapes, the actual greenery and flowers. around there and then just before it dries we need to drop in some grey there we go and that goes round the crevices formed by the texture paste and then we let that dry for a moment and around we go the bottom of the window between the leaves bit more yellow ochre. So the washes are a little bit more intense in places and a bit more pale in others so it's a more natural looking wash. This is old walls, these are old walls so that they're going to be a little bit weathered and not very perfect. Around here and circulating all the way around and I'm going to put just a little bit of burnt sienna in there as well. I think that could just do with a bit of warmth before it dries and adding some more over here. There we are. This has got to be quite quick because otherwise it's all going to dry and you'll have some hard edges which we don't want. Right the way around there. there. Dropping some more grey into there. And we'll tidy this up a little bit later on. And a bit of burnt sienna. There. 
the next thing we need to do, I'm going to put the dark windows in. This is Windsor Blue and a spot of Burnt Sienna. So the windows need to be really dark inside. So I'm using my brush on its edge. There we are. It doesn't have to be too perfect, but it just shows the lovely deep recesses of the window. We go round the little dishcloth. There we are. And doing that space, butting up to the greenery and the flowers and over the other side there we are. and around the pegs. Some of the colour doesn't completely mix together which is better because then you get a variation of the burnt sienna and the blue. One of them can be a little bit stronger. So letting that dry we go to a different place on the painting and paint in the shutters. Now this is a very pale grey, watered down with a little cerulean blue. So I'm putting that colour right over this area. So some of the cerulean blue will come out in places a little bit more intensely and the other will be greyer. And we go there and then round the leaves so they become very obvious. And under, over to the other side. Press hard on the brush and that does it in one stroke. There we go. And there. Yes, shutters come in all different shapes and sizes, but I'm trying to keep this one fairly simple. There we go. Now, on the top of the window, there is a structure, and I'm going to make that a little more obvious with burnt sienna and a touch of the blue. And just make some squares, little blocks there, and around some of the stonework so it looks a little bit more random a little bit more older and a bit more weathered there we go so this is still burnt sienna and a touch of the windsor blue and over to the other side there we are now i need to get some deeper shadow into the window so that it looks a bit more of a recess. So I have got some blue and burnt sienna with a touch of violet in there. There we go. Lovely dark in, inside, underneath the window, right inside there. So it gives a three-dimensional look to the window and it starts coming out towards you a little bit. And that comes out through there and down over here like that and down over the inside of the window. There we are. That's the fall of the shadow inside the recess of the window. There we are. Pull this down through here. And then we get the details of the window just put in quickly but we're going to leave some of the white paper and this is beautiful in a watercolour painting. Some of the white paper can be the most delicious of all. That can go under there. Violet makes a beautiful shadow colour if it's mixed with this blue and if it's too intense I sometimes put some burnt sienna in it. underneath the window there and across there and there. I'm adding just a little bit of yellow ochre down through here. Yep. 
then mixing some green for the flowers and their leaves, placing this in. This is an olive green and I'm going to mix some blues with it and some burnt siennas just to get a variation. So we're getting some darker colours in there. And then again some more leaves here. Trying to do it fairly free but with those variations of tone which makes it much more natural looking. There we go. Kind of flick it with the brush and try to get the massed look as well as the individual leaves. There we go. I'm going to put a bit of burnt sienna in there to get a variation on that. There we go. So we've got quite a lot of massed leaves there and some more here. So we've got again a variety of different heights of these plants and then some splash some colour in in a minute. So we've got those. I'm going to put some bright pinky colour in there. So we've got some pinky flowers and adding a little bit of orangey colour to it. So we've got the sunlight on these plants as well. And then lifting a bit of that colour, bringing it elsewhere. I've got a nice colourful corner over there. And I'm going to bring some of this colour over onto the dishcloth. Here we are. A little bit of shadow on there. Perhaps some patterning. I'm just going to let this dry for a few minutes. Well, it's nearly dry enough, so we could move on to the next stage. We're going to do some slightly deeper shadows around the window, really deep in here. So that again is another wash of violet and burnt sienna. Goes in under there and around there, under here a bit more, under here, there, there, and just in under there. And another wash of a shadow right in underneath here and against the flowers because they cause a fabulous kind of design of shadows there. So some shadows in. Right, here we go. Then we're going to do some splattering which is quite fun. This again is burnt sienna, watered down, and this ages the surface. So I'm splattering against the end of my finger with a loaded brush of pigment. Just ages the whole surface and gives a kind of pitted, weathered effect. Lovely. Great fun to do. You might have to practice first before you put it on your own painting. And if it's going to be a bit too sharp, do that with your fingers. There we are. It just softens the edges a bit. And then over the top of the window, just here. There we go. There. Is that fun? There. It gives a bit of character to it. Down the edge there. And then a little bit of more structure to the window. bit of yellow ochre just down here and down the edge here. Right, that's gone all the way around the windows and yes I think we are all ready to wash off the masking fluid. So we'll stop and we'll let everything dry again. Now this seems to be dried enough so I can rub off the masking fluid. You have to press quite hard and this, this is, exposes the white paper, which we're going to paint on in a minute. <sighs> Blow it all out of the way. Now the next 
wash I'm going to use a yellowy green for the highlights of our foliage. So the sun is just catching the edges of these leaves in a lovely yellowy green. There we are. So this is this could be formed by a yellow with your olive green or a ready mixed yellowy green, whichever one you have. And then a bit of orange onto the flowers. These are gentle washes so that you don't flood the whole area and the masking fluid just shows through as a design through there. There we go. I'm going to put a wash of light bluey violet over the shadowed area again because the edges of the window need to be put into shadow. and the little dishcloth just catches the edge of the sunlight. There we go. And a deeper recess shadow on the edge here. There we go. And it doesn't matter if it runs a bit because shadows do go into crevices and a shadow underneath the shutter. darker piece there and a darker piece under there. A bit of dark at the edge and down here. So we've got some more detail lurking in the shadows there. I'm going to do the texturing of the windows and this is burnt sienna with a little bit of the light cerulean blue and I'm using the edge of the brush going down carefully but with a broken line not too harsh because it doesn't look natural and, right, and defining the planking of the shutter there. I know it's going over wiggling a bit but I think it looks natural more natural if you do wiggle it around a bit and then just soften the edges with some water. There we are. And the same the other side. Breaking the line again. There we are. A bit more. So this is burnt sienna and blue. And if you're a bit adventurous, you could put some orange, an orange hinge on there. That's ready mix orange with a little burnt sienna and over on the other side as well. And you could sneak a little bit of oozing rust into the wood and drag it down with your fingers. And with addition of the burnt sienna, you could put some holes, the well, a little bit of blue, I think, a few holes, nail holes in that. There we go. I want to put just a very, very quick, delicate wash on just a little bit of this so that it's not completely stark white, but nearly. I'm putting an extra bit just down here and soften this bit here. Just a few little dots of dark just to put, give a little bit more structure to the flowers. And just darken this little bit up just slightly. And 
Yeah. Right, I'm going to intensify this bit of shadow under the window here, right into that recess, and that will push the window back again into more depth. And that's going to make it much more realistic. There we go. And then I'm going to put some more shadows around the plants. And there we go, just put a few more in there. And perhaps a little bit of shadow on the edge down here as well. Yeah. These last details are quite important. Just these little accents of um, darks make all the difference to making it look finished and realistic. I'm putting a bit of Alorizian crimson into the flowers so there's a bit more structure there. So these plants have got more structure there. There we go. And perhaps a bit of detail on, on here makes it a bit more fun. And a spot more orange onto the hinge. And a bit of shadow under here, a bit, a bit of blue under here. What about a little hook here for the window? This hooks back the shutters. There we are. And just to, to enforce the nail heads there. That goes there. A little wash just down here to varying the colour. Yeah, I think that's some um, completed now. I hope you enjoyed this demonstration of how to use the texture paste on your walls and how foliage helps to soften the edges of your window. Do go and have a try yourself and I hope you enjoy it. <laughs>